Hello everyone, I am Dr. Pallavi, your Dermatology faculty and in this video here, we will be discussing the derma recall questions asked in the INICT exam conducted just a few days back on November 12, 2022. I hope all of you had a very good exam and when you had given the exam, you must have realized that all the questions asked in derma have been discussed in your regular videos asked as questions across different TNDs, GTs and mock tests. So for the ones who are yet to give the exam, make sure that your preparation is solid. You go through all the content, you revise and only then you can recall it in the exam. And very, very importantly, do the previous year's questions because most of the questions here are repeat, if not the same question, then the same topic. Okay, so beginning with our discussion, coming to question number one, a diabetic patient presents with asymptomatic lesion in the axilla, which shows coral red fluorescence on Wood's lamp. What is the causative organism? Just the text in itself is sufficient to give us the answer. But let us look at the image. Here it shows that the rash is a reddish brown scaly lesion. Now this reddish brown scaly lesion could be anything but when it is asymptomatic in a diabetic this is a classic description of what we know as erythrasma and this erythrasma is a bacterial infection caused by Corymi bacteria minutissimum. So the correct answer to question number one is option A, that is Corymi bacterium minutissimum. The other two options B and C are fungi, which cause a skin rash. Okay, very commonly in diabetics, yes, but the rash is itchy. And this option D, trichophyton chondonai, causes tenia capitis. So these three ruled out. The correct answer is option A. A few words about erythrasma. We have already seen that it is caused by Corine bacteria minus in diabetics, most commonly seen in the skin folds, where most common is the axilla. Some dermatology textbooks say that toe web is the most common site, but for the purpose of the NEAT PG exam, we will remember that axilla is the most common site. So I have had some students talking about this as their, uh, you know, a confusing question, but remember most commonly it is seen in the axilla. And when you do the woods lamp, you see this coral red fluorescence. Why do you see the coral red fluorescence? because the bacteria produces porphyrins. In this case, it is coproporphyrin 3, which is produced, and that is what gives the coral red fluorescence on Wood's lamp. The other three options, just see them um, in a brief here. Candida albicans causes candidiasis, which in the oral cavity is the pseudomembranous candidiasis. And on the skin, it presents as candida intertrigo. But intertrigo will show redness, it will show maceration, peripheral scaling, satellite lesions. Yes, it will be seen in diabetics in the skin folds, but the peripheral scaling, satellite lesions, all this will be classically seen. Then we had trichophyton rubrum. It is the most common cause of the tenia corporis, cruris or nicomycosis, pedis. So most of these tenias, the most common organism is trichophyton rubrum, also common in diabetics, but the rash here classically is itchy. So it will cause an itchy erythematous annular rash with scaling vesicles and pustules. Lastly, we have trichophyton chondonai, which is the causative organism of a type of tenia capitis known as favus has been asked in the FMG exam last year and a crust that is specifically seen in favors it is called as scutula. So the crust here remember is called as scutula and the causative fungi is trichophyton shonlonai. Coming to question number two, which of the following disease has vesicular lesions? Vesicle means what? Yes, it means a clear fluid filled blister 
less than one centimeter in size. <coughs> so it is a clear fluid filled blister less than one centimeter in size. And which of the following disease shows it? We have hand foot mouth disease, roseola, dengue and Zika. Yes, I know you know the answer that is HFMD because it shows vesicles on hand, foot and mouth. So the correct answer to question number two is option A that is hand, foot, mouth disease. These other three generally show a macular or a maculopapular rash. Okay. Now this fever with rash on its own is a very favorite question of the INICT exam asked in almost every exam if you see at the last three years papers. So this becomes an important topic to remember. Here I have listed the important infectious causes of a vesicular rash. We have bullus impetigo which is caused by staph aureus, then herpes labialis and genital herpes caused by HSV1 and 2. Then chickenpox, herpes zoster caused by the varicella zoster virus. HFMD caused by the different enterovirus, but most commonly Coxsackie A16. And we have early congenital syphilis where the baby also gives a vesicular rash caused by Treponema pallidum. So these are the important infectious causes of vesicles. In brief about HFMD, most commonly Coxsackie A16, you see it in healthy children as a fever with a painful elliptical vesicles on hand, foot and mouth. As you see in the picture here, these are all vesicles. It is self-resolving, goes in a few days and uh, there was recently an epidemic in India amongst uh, school going kids of HFMD. So these central exams are very fond of asking those illnesses which have recently been more widespread in our country. So you should actually go through the news and uh, uh, you know read about these important infections that are spreading so that could be a potential question in the upcoming exam. The other three options, roseola, uh, also called as exanthem subitum, is caused by HHV6 virus and this presents in um, young uh, early age as pinkish colored lacy reticulate rash on the body. So this is more of a macular rash that presents in the children. Then we have dengue. Dengue in its own can cause a macular rash which is a little scarlet -y -y form. And when the platelet count goes down, it could also present with a petechial rash. And then we have Zika. Zika also presents with a macular rash. Okay, so none of these show vesicles. Coming to question number three, a patient presents with papules. What is the histopath finding in the case? So what does the histopath show us? See, there is an epidermal lobulation here and we see a lot of pinkish structures in the histopath here. So these pinkish or eosinophilic structures that we see are actually inclusion bodies. We can't really make out whether these are intracytoplasmic or what but we see that these are eosinophilic inclusion bodies and there is a sort of a central dip here which could be a central umbilication. So yes, I've said all the key words. Where do you see central umbilication? Where do you see eosinophilic intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies? That is seen in molluscum and these eosinophilic inclusion bodies are called as henderson peterson bodies so the correct answer to this is henderson peterson bodies even if you can't really make out uh, the diagnosis you can just see these pinkish inclusion bodies then also it is henderson peterson bodies let us see by elimination madam you don't know anything let's eliminate multinuclear giant cells we know will look like this so that's not the answer 
Zinc cells are acantholytic cells here with a large round nucleus. Again, we don't see that here. Coilocytes are vacuolated keratinocytes. Again, we don't see them here. What we see are these eosinophilic inclusion bodies that are the Henderson-Peterson bodies. This molluscum contagiosum is caused by the mollusky pox virus, which is a type of a pox virus, most commonly by MCV1. While in adults and HIV positive patients, it is MCV2. That is the more common cause. Presents as pearly white dome shaped papules with a central umbilication. And you see here that the lesions are present in a line. You know, see, they're present along a line. This sign is called as pseudocognorization also called as pseudo-isomorphic phenomena. So that's a very important question from Alaskam. It is one of the causes of pseudo-isomorphic phenomena, the other one being warts. And when you do the histopath, on its own histopath is a very important image-based question. You see this epidermal lobulation here. Then you see a lot of eosinophilic inclusion bodies, which are intracytoplasmic. These are the henderson Peterson bodies, also called as the molluscum bodies. These are largest inclusion bodies known. Okay, and molluscum is a self-resolving disease. The lesions go on their own in six to nine months. The other two options I want to show you, the one was coilocytes, which is actually a typical change seen when the skin cells are infected with human papilloma virus. That is the disease being warts. Here you see that the keratinocytes are vacuolated. Okay, so these are coilocytes. And then we have the zang cells, which are the acantholytic or the separated keratinocytes that you see in pemphigus. Okay, I hope that's clear to all of you. Coming to question number four sporotrichoid pattern or a nodular lymphangitis is seen in all infections except these fungal infections and patterns and fever rashes and morphology all of these are very favorite of the INICT so you know this question was just about to be asked now the clinical picture shows multiple nodules in a linear pattern which as it mentions is nodular lymphangitis it is seen in all except Sporotrichschenka and Nocardia, Mycobacterium marinum, or Staph aureus. Now, Sporotrichschenka causes sporotrichosis. So, most definitely it is seen here. Mycobacterium marinum causes fish tank granuloma. Again, we have a sporotrichoid pattern here. Now, we are left with options C and A. Nocardia, not all of you may remember, but it is also one of the causes of a sporotrichoid pattern. It is staph aureus where we don't see nodules. So staph aureus is the one where we don't see a nodular lymphangitis. So the correct answer to question number four is option A, that is staph aureus. Some diseases that show a sporotrichoid pattern can be remembered as TAN. I have only listed the most important topics where S is for sporotrichosis, T is for tuberculosis, A is for atypical tuberculosis, especially the one caused by Mycobacterium marinum, which causes fish tank granuloma. Sometimes infection caused by Mycobacterium cancersi can also show it, but you remember Mycobacterium marinum. And N is for nocardiosis. Some other infections like Leishmaniasis, cat, scratch disease caused by Bartonella henselii and cutaneous anthrax. These are some other diseases that may come in this pattern, but most importantly remember STAN. Now sporotrichosis, you see these multiple nodulo-ulcerative lesions which from the point of inoculation will spread in a ascending pattern. So what you actually see here is ascending lymphangitis. 
So what you see here is ascending lymphangitis. So nodular lymphangitis, ascending pattern. The mode of entry is mostly through a penetrating trauma with the rose thorn. So this kind of a disease is seen in rose gardener. So it is also called as rose gardener disease. And when you do the histopath, you see these star-shaped asteroid bodies and these cigar-shaped yeast. So sporotrichos is very, very important to remember. And another uh, one is fish tank granuloma, which is caused by Mycobacterium marinum. See, if you look at the clinical picture, all of these are nodules in a lymphoid pattern. So how do you come to the answer? You see the occupation. If it's a gardener or a farmer, the answer is sporotrichosis. On the other hand, if it is somebody who deals with water bodies, the answer is fish tank granuloma. Okay, clear? Good. Now we come to question number five, that is chromoblastomycosis is characterized by what? So what do you see in the image here? You see these copper colored structures which are actually yeast budding in a equatorial pattern. So that is a typical finding that you see in chromoblastomycosis which is called as sclerotic bodies. So the answer to this question is option A, that is sclerotic bodies. Last year, they asked a question which had a clinical image of chromoblastomycosis. This year, they have asked the histopath of the same disease. So again, I tell you that all the questions here are repeat questions. Now, angioinvasion, generally seen in malignancies like SCC, malignant melanoma, and then we have asteroid bodies. I just showed you this in sporotrichosis. You also see it in sarcoidosis. And grain with fungal elements is seen in eumycetomas. Okay. Now, this was the image asked last year in the exam where chromoblastomycosis presents as nodules with a varicose surface and they're grouped together forming a cauliflower-like structure. So you have these varicose nodules in a cauliflower-like mass, which is why it is also called as varicose dermatitis. And chromo means color. So this is generally caused by pigmented fungi like Fonsacea, Fialophora or Cladosporium. And what is the histopath finding? You see these copper colored structures. These are called as copper penny bodies also called as sclerotic bodies which was asked in the exam and the last name is medullar bodies so these three mean the same they are the budding yeast that you see in the histopath then we have question number six a black ishkar over the back is due to which of the following? Now, what you see in the image is this blackish necrotic skin that is called as an ishkar. Rocky Mountain spotted fever, scrub typhus, COVID-19 or malaria. Well, COVID-19 and malaria don't have it, we are for sure. Out of this Rocky Mountain spotted fever shows more of pink spots and scrub typhus shows the scar so the correct answer to question six is option b that is scrub typhus again it's a repeat question last year they asked all of the following show an scar except so it was like which of these does not have an scar this year which has an scar okay so this again is a repeat question I have just made a list of the important diseases that show an Eshkar. Remember it with the mnemonic stage, where S is for spider bite or tick bite. Then T stands for scrub typhus, A is for anthrax, and G is ectherema gangrenosum caused by the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Okay, so these are the important diseases that show an Eshkar out of which these are quite commonly asked. 
Scrub typhus asked at least three to four times in the last seven years or so. Caused by Orientia susugamushi. The bite is from the, uh, you know, trombiculid mite larvae which are called as shiggers. These are quite commonly seen during the harvest season. So, you know, people, the farmers who are involved in harvesting can get bitten by these shiggers and they present with fever and CNS signs. When you examine the skin of the patient, you see this black eshkar. That is how you come to the diagnosis, you know, clinical suspicion of scrub typhus. And treatment is with doxycycline. This is cutaneous anthrax. Again, you see the eshkar. It is caused by bacillus. Anthrax is more common in people who work with sheep. Coming to question 7, again a repeat question. The following finding is seen in which disease? So what is it that you see in the picture? You see multiple pinkish to erythematous papules on the interphalangeal joints and the metacarpophalangeal joints. The diagnosis here are the Gautrin's papules. So where are Gautrin's papules seen? Easy one. These are seen in option C, that is dermatomyositis. Rheumatoid arthritis uh, shows more of rheumatoid nodules, not this kind of a picture. Systemic sclerosis and SLE, we just see. Revising the important findings in dermatomyositis, it is an autoimmune disease where there is an inflammation in the skin as well as the proximal muscles. In the skin, we see this periobital erythema that is called as the heliotrope rash. Then the scaly macules on the interphalangeal joints and the metacarpophalangeal joints, these are called as Gotrin's papules. These are two pathogenomic findings of dermatomyositis. Then we have Gotrin's erythema, which is linear erythema on the fingers and the hand. Then we have V-sign, which is erythema over the V area of the neck. When it is on the upper back, it is a shawl sign. On the waist and the lateral thigh, holster sign. <coughs> then we have roughening of the inner side of the fingers, the index and the thumb that is called as mechanics hand. And there are capillary dilatations on the nail folds, which are called as periangual telangiectasias, out of which questions on periangual telangiectasia and mechanics hand have been asked. Then coming to cutaneous LE. Acute LE shows this butterfly rash involving the malar area and the bridge of the nose. So this is what you see as the malar rash in acute SLE. Then we come to chronic cutaneous LE or discoid LE where you see this rash surrounded by marginal hyperpigmentation. If you look closely, there is this whitish adherent scaling in the rash. There is a sign associated with it. It is called as the carpet tack sign. And DLE always heals with scarring. So when it is present in the scalp, it causes scarring alopecia. Okay? Systemic sclerosis. On the face, there will be a mask-like facies, pinched nose, pursed lips, perioral ragades. On the fingers, you see that the fingers become thin and tapering. There are digital pitted scars and the patient gives history of Raynaud's phenomena. Then some patients may also show whitish nodules here, which have a cheesy white discharge. They are called as Calcinosis cutis. Then we come to question number eight. Which of the following is not a non scarring disease? How can the INICT exam not have a question on alopecia? It will always have. Okay, so which of these is not a non scarring alopecia? Alopecia areata, telogenic fluvium, androgenic alopecia, and frontal fibrosing alopecia. Now, what is frontal fibrosing alopecia? I have not studied it. It's okay if I have not studied. Let's eliminate. Alopecia areata we know is a patchy non-scarring alopecia. 
टीरिजन फ्लूवियम सीन आफ्टर कोविड और प्रेगनेंसी अगेन इट इज नॉन स्कारिंग ए जी ए अगेन पैटर्न हेयर लॉस नॉन स्कारिंग सो इवन इफ यू हैव नॉट रेड बाय एलिमिनेशन आल्सो द करेक्ट आंसर हियर इज ऑप्शन डी दैट इज फ्रंटल फाइब्रोजिंग एलोपीशिया हेयर देर इज अ बैंड लाइक यू नो स्कारिंग एलोपीशिया ऑन द फ्रंट now this is a list of non scarring and scarring alopecia the non scarring alopecia can be remembered as streaks that is trichotillomania alopecia areata effluviums which include the anagen and the telogen effluvium androgenic alopecia tinea capitis and secondary syphilis sle make up the s so trichotillomania alopecia areata effluviums aga tinea capitis Mothitan alopecia and secondary syphilis and SLE are the important causes of non-scarring alopecia. Then we come to cicatricial alopecia, where I have just made a BL and CD, where BL is for the first three, where there is pseudopilar of Brock and lupus erythematosus and lichen planus pilaris. These three are lympho. cystic cicatricial alopecia and then we have cd which is dissecting cellulitis and folliculitis d calvins these are the neutrophilic cicatricial alopecia apart from that morphia traction alopecia burns and kerion are other important causes of non scarring alopecia an important list i always stress upon the students to remember it because this used to be a very favorite question till about 3 4 years back you know now again they have asked this one now the last question finasteride mechanism of action well we all know that finasteride is a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor it is a non selective 5 alpha reductase inhibitor used in the treatment of androgenetic alopecia and benign prostatic hypertrophy aromatase inhibitors like letrozole and estrozole these are used in treatment of breast cancer and gene receptor blockers like spironolactone pcod and other causes of hyperandrogenism and cyp17 a1 inhibitor that is ketoconazole again is different so the correct answer to question 9 is option b that is a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor a very important topic that they didn't ask this time was the stds otherwise if you look at the last 3 years stds and leprosy make up half the questions every year but this time they came to some new one topics even the repeat questions but newer ones so with this we end the discussion i hope all of you understood what we discussed any doubts you can list them in the comments mail me at apalavi99 at gmail.com or you can add to the telegram group the link is added below all the best for your exam study well study hard and you will always succeed thank you